In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create stylized, sculpted heads like this. This is a two-part series. The first part is setting up the base mesh, and the second shorter video is more the detailed sculpt. This is meant to be a follow-along style tutorial, so open up Blender and join in for the best learning experience. I try as much as I can to make this as beginner focused as possible, but you will need a basic understanding of the interface to follow along. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and playlists on this channel for more great content. So let's get started. So I'm in Blender 3.0, as you can see down the bottom here. I've got my screencast keys down the bottom corner here, and I'm in the general startup file. Now to start off with, we don't need any of these objects, so I can box select those and press delete. Now sculpting is much easier with a background image that you can kind of trace around. And I've got two background images that you can use. The first one is obviously a front and side view of a female stylized face with a light bit of shading. The second one may help you with your sculpting because it's got a bit of detail about the planes of the face and some curvature lines here to kind of help you when fleshing out your model. This bit's quite tricky to trace within Blender, so you might want this on a second screen as a reference. So I'll close that down and I'll drag this image into Blender. So click and drag into our Blender scene. Now you'll notice it comes in perpendicular to the camera and we can reposition this easily. Alt R to remove any rotation and Alt G to remove any grabbing or movement. Now I can press R X 90 to rotate in the X axis, the red one going along the middle, 90 degrees, and then press enter. Remember you've got your axes labeled up the top here as well to help. Now I want to reposition this so I can go into front view and we can press the minus Y here, or I can press one on my numpad and that will do the same thing. Let's zoom in and grab this and move it into the middle. Now this is a bit tricky, I want it to line up with the Z or Z axis going down the middle here. We can't see it very well. Well with my empty selected, that's my background image and you can see it's empty there. I'll change the name of it to front by double left clicking on the name. I can then come down to the bottom here to the object data properties and tick the opacity option and make it less opaque, somewhere around 0.3. That way you can see the Z axis and I can zoom in and make sure it's right in the center somewhere around there. Okay, let's zoom out a bit again and sort out our side image. So with my object selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate and then left click. That's created a duplicate right on top of the other one and I'll rename this side. I'll come around to the top so you can see what's going on. If I press R, Z, 90 now, that will rotate around the Z axis, the blue one going up and down, 90 degrees, and then press enter. Now let's go to side view. I can either press X up here or I can press three on my numpad. And now I can move this side view into position, but don't move it up and down in the Z. So if I press G then Y, it will constrain that to the Y axis. So somewhere around there and left click. So we're left with these two images like this. Now I want to model around the center point here, the world origin. So I'm going to press G then X to move that backwards. And this one, G then Y to move that backwards. And now I can model in the front of the two of them nice and easily and jump from front view and side view and trace around. So the next thing to do is to add something I can sculpt. We can go up to the add menu here, or we can press shift A for short, but do make sure your 3D cursor is right in the center for this. And you can move this with shift right click. And if it's not right in the center, press shift S, which brings up this pie menu, and you need to hover over cursor to world origin. That will move it back into the middle. So shift A to add, mesh, and then UV sphere. Now we can scale and position this. So one on my numpad to go to front view, scale it down, and G to grab. Make sure you don't grab it along the X axis because we need that for the symmetry. So it's a good idea to constrain it to an axis when you press G to grab. So G then Z in this case. So somewhere around there, zoom in a bit, scale it down a touch. Let's go to side view and we want to scale this in the Y and G then Y and we're roughly there. Now if I press N on my keyboard and go to item, the important thing with this is that we don't move it in the X axis. If you accidentally move it in the X axis, then make sure that is reset to zero. I'll undo that movement so it's back where it was. Okay, so now we want to actually start sculpting this object so it mimics the head shape. But before going into sculpt mode, we want to have a look at the scale. Now, because I scaled this in object mode, it's got non-uniform scale. So if I do go across to the sculpting workspace, you get this error message, non-uniform scale, it may be unpredictable. So back to layout mode, we want to change this so it's set to one. It won't change the dimensions, but it will help Blender to understand the object better. To do this, we press Control A, to apply, and you've got the object menu here as well, apply, so control A for short, and go to the scale. That resets all these to one. Now when we go to sculpt mode, there's no error message. Okay, so in the sculpting workspace, because we selected our sphere, it's put it into sculpt mode, and I'll drag out my brushes so you can read what I'm using. Don't worry about these numbers here, that's because I've got a time-lapse 
running in the background. So that might look slightly different for you. The first brush I want to show you is the grab brush. And we can grab and pull our mesh around into position. Now it's worth saying that I'm using a display tablet. And working with a display tablet or graphics tablet will greatly speed up your workflow. It's not impossible to do this sculpting with a mouse, but it is that bit more tricky. If you want to learn more about display tablets and graphics tablets, then follow the link in the description to my buyer's guide. So before we start, if I start pulling this around now, you can see that it doesn't mirror on the other side. So I'll undo that and make sure you've got the mirror option ticked just up there. And we want to mirror along the X axis. So the red line going across. Now, when I do one thing on one side, it will mirror on the other. So I'll undo that. Make my brush nice and big with F to resize your brush and move your pen side to side. And then I can drag this down into position. I'll go to front view so we can line it up properly and just move this around a little bit. Then across the side view and do the same. Now with this, you don't need to do the nose or the lips. We'll draw those in a little bit more later on. Remember to resize your brush with F and somewhere around there should work well. Also, you want to go to perspective view and notice the front of my face is quite sort of flat. It's a good idea to add some curvature there. So bring these in a bit. And the back of the head is actually bigger than the front, so you can bring that in a fair bit more than it is at the moment, just to make sure it's rounded like this. Double check, front view and side view. So you might need to come back round and pull the back out a little bit more so it meets up. If you pull it out too far by accident like this, you can access the smooth brush, which is this brush here, and it's got these settings here but just keep them all at default for now. But you can access that quickly if I go back to the grab brush by holding down shift. So hold down shift and you can smooth things out. And we've roughly got a head shape there. The next phase is to add some different objects for the neck, ears, eyes, and nose. For this, it's easiest to go back into layout mode. And the nose and the neck, they want to be in line with the head, so in the center. So we'll start with those because our 3D cursor is in the center. So shift A to add, mesh, and then a UV sphere for the nose. Scale that right down into side view, G to grab and move that where the nose is and scale into position. So we're ready to sculpt the nose, but do remember you need to reset the scale. It is actually uniform scale, but it's helpful to reset it to one. Then Blender will understand its size better. So control A, apply scale. Then we can go back to sculpting mode and I can start sculpting this into position. So let's go to side view to start with, with the grab brush and with the X axis turned on, I can start pulling it into position. So somewhere around there in side view, front view gets much harder because we can't see our background image anymore. We can turn on X-ray mode, which is just here. And we've also got wireframe mode. And you can toggle these different things by pressing Alt-Z for wireframe. So Alt-Z if you quickly need to see the background image or Shift-Z to toggle between wireframe mode and solid mode. So I can now start moving this into position with the help of that background image. So somewhere around there looks good. So Shift Z to go back to solid mode and Alt Z to turn off X-ray. Let's go back to layout mode for the ears and the neck. So once again, we've got our 3D cursor in the middle. So Shift A to add, and this time we'll add mesh and cylinder. Let's go to side view to scale that into position and scale in the Z and rotate it. Now it's important to have these objects overlap and intersecting because that helps when we come to join it later on. So somewhere around there should work well. Let's just go to front view and check that and that's fine. Now for the ears, we can move the 3D cursor to add the ears. So shift right click to move that 3D cursor. Let's go to side view and make sure it's in the right position. So shift Z to go to wireframe, shift right click to move that cursor into the middle somewhere around there and shift Z to turn off wireframe. Shift A to add, mesh and once again the cylinder, scale it right down, scale in the Z and then let's start rotating this into position. You don't have to make it too accurate as you can kind of sculpt it into position. Do make sure though that it is overlapping. So I might want to scale it in the X a little bit more just to make sure it's got that clear overlap there to help us. Now we need to mirror this across the other side. So across to the modifiers here where this spanner or wrench is, add modifier, mirror modifier. Now we can't see anything at the moment because it's kind of mirroring on itself. But what we can do is choose with our pipette here a mirror object. So I'll click on the pipette, click the sphere as our mirror object, which is our head at the moment and it's mirrored it to the other side. Now we will need to apply this mirror because you can't sculpt with a mirror on and to apply it, you can come to this drop down and there's the apply option there and you can see it's control A for short. So if I hover over this and press control A, it applies that mirror. That's great, we're almost ready to sculpt these objects, but first I need to set their scale. So I can select both of them at the same time and press control A and apply the scale and that will set 
them both to one so if I select the ears as well they're at one and the neck. The slight problem we have with the ears if I select on those is that the rotation isn't set to zero. That means when we try and do some symmetrizing later on we may come up against problems. So it's a good idea to reset the rotation as well. So control A and we've got a rotation option there as well. That's why you have a rotation and scale because lots of people like to reset them at the same time. But we can set the rotation and it's back to zero. And the same for the neck just to be safe. So control A rotation. The other problem if I click on my ears is that the object origin this orange point here is in the center of this side rather than in the center of both of them. And that may cause us problems as well, so it's a good idea to reset that to make sure that it's in the center of our object. For that, I can right click and there's a set origin option here. And in this case, I can do origin to geometry and it will take the middle point between the whole of the geometry and that is in the center. And you can test that by seeing this X location is at zero here. If for any reason it doesn't, you can always move your 3D cursor back to the world origin, so Shift S cursor to world origin and then right click set origin to 3d cursor instead that does move it down to the bottom here but that again doesn't make too much difference because the all important location is the x-axis here so all our objects have that location of zero okay so i can now go into sculpt mode and start sculpting these different objects i'll start with the neck so i'll select that and go across to sculpting and let's go to side view and choose the grab brush once again and you'll notice that you won't be able to move your cylinder However, you can move it down here, but not in the middle. That's because there's vertices down here. If I go to wireframe again with Shift Z, you can see there's the vertices, and I can move those, but there's none in the middle for me to move. So I press the Shift Z to go back to solid mode. What we need to do is to add some faces, add some vertices to this. For that, we come up to the Remesh option up here, and the most important option here is Voxel Size. That's the size of your faces. Now, it's tricky to see really what this size means, and it's much easier if we press Shift R and then we can actually see the voxel size, which is the face size we're going to end up with. And we can move our mouse side to side, or our pen side to side, to get some more detail into our shape. So I think about 0 0.03 is working for me. And you can left click, and you can come up to remesh and press the remesh button, or you can press Control R. So that's Shift R to set the voxel size, Control R to remesh. Now I can start moving this shape into position because I've got these extra vertices to play with. Make my brush nice and big and start grabbing these and pulling them around. Let's go to front view. Ah, now I've made a mistake. I forgot to turn X symmetry on. And that's really common. I do that all the time. What you can do is obviously undo and turn it back on. But instead, you can use the drop down menu here and symmetrize. At the moment, it's minus X to positive X, and that's the wrong way around. That would be from this side to this side. So I want to change that from the positive X to minus X and then symmetrize, and that will copy it across. And now you can see they're both the same. Let's go back to front view, turn that X symmetry on, and now start moving our mesh around again. Remember to hold down Shift if you need to kind of tidy up. Where the mesh is stretched like this, holding down Shift will have more influence because it's taking the average between the vertices and sort of bringing them together. So if you need to even it out, you can press Control R for another remesh, and that, and that will again reshape our model. I'll use the smooth brush to make sure it's nicely rounded out. Now to switch between objects, I can press Alt-Q and you can see it jumps between the objects in sculpt mode. So I can go across to the ears and firstly remesh them and then start sculpting them. So Shift-R to set the voxel size. Think about that 0.3 should do well again. Control-R to remesh. That's done both sides. Make sure I turn symmetry on this time and let's start sculpting these into position. You can use the smooth brush and you can easily jump back to other objects if you want to edit them in any way. I think the main face needs a bit more resolution now, so Alt-Q and let's Shift-R to choose the voxel size, about 0.3 again, and Control-R to remesh. Now we can start thinking about the eye sockets. Let's just reposition the head, make sure we've got the right places. And shift said will put you into wireframe so you can kind of see where you're going a little bit more. It's still pretty tough at this point, so now we really need the eye in to help us to shape the head properly. So let's go back to layout mode. We can shift right click to move the 3D cursor, shift A to add and a UV sphere is good for this. Scale it down, somewhere around there. Lots of people like to have it kind of facing forward. So R, X, 90, and then it looks like it's got a kind of iris there. Let's go to front view, shift Z, wireframe, and try and move this into a sensible position, probably around here. 
I always find it very tough with stylized characters to get the eyes correct and the right size. I always end up making them too big. So I'm keeping this one fairly small. Into side view, and it's roughly in the right position there, it looks like. So let's mirror it across the other side. Shift Z back to solid mode with the spanner, add modifier, mirror, and choose that sphere object in the center, our central head. Okay, looking a bit weird at the moment, but we're getting there. Now for the eyelids, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can kind of draw the eyelids out over the eyeball, which works reasonably well if you're fairly advanced with sculpting, but it's a little bit easier to use an eyeball shape and sort of cut out some eyelids from it. And I'll show you how to do that now. So with this sphere selected, I'll rename it eye, so we can see what's going on. And I'll duplicate it. So Shift D to duplicate, left click, and we've got that eye copy there. I'll call this eyelids. Now we want to rotate it around the Z axis 90 degrees. Difficult to see what's going on, so I'll hide the original eyes. And you can see now we can cut out an area for the eyelids. This is a bit easier in local view. You can go up to view and local view just here, and it's numpad forward slash. And then we can only see the eyelids, which does help. However, I can't see my reference at the front, so I'll just come back out of that with forward slash on my numpad. Front view first, Alt Z to go to X-ray mode just to see where the eyelids are. And let's go to edit mode here. So tab into edit mode or edit mode up here. And we need to select these three face loops. So let's go to face mode up here or three on your keyboard, alt left click, and then shift alt left click to select multiple ones. The problem is you often select the back ones. So I'll alt A to deselect all. And let's come out of x-ray mode and alt left click to select the ones we want there. Now let's go to local view so we can select these very end ones just here. So that's forward slash on my numpad for local view. And then we can press delete and then faces. Then we got some eyelids. Back out of local view with forward slash, back out of edit mode, and let's bring back the original eyes. Still with our eyelids selected, we need to add another modifier. So add modifier and solidify. That adds some thickness. And we can use the thickness slider here. You'll need to go to negative to bring it out like this. And you can go reasonably thick for stylized characters and it will help you a little bit with your sculpting as well. So somewhere around there. You might want this point here to be back a touch further, so R, Z, just to move it around slightly. And if we go to front view, you might want to press R to rotate it so it angles upwards. And again, we can go to wireframe, so Shift Z, to try and get it in line with our character's eyes. And that seems to be working well. Back to solid mode. And before joining the eyelids to the head, let's shape the head a little bit better around the eyeballs. So select the head, back to sculpt mode, and for this, it's probably best on the draw brush. And you can hold down control if you want to dig in with the draw brush, which you might have to in the center here a little bit more, and just draw normally to add to the mesh. At this point, you may want to flesh out some of the face as well to get the general shape. So perhaps around the mouth, digging in with control and slowly building up. Now you may find you still haven't got enough faces. So remember you can press Shift R and we can go a little bit finer now to something like 0.015 or similar and control R to do the remesh. And we've got a lot more faces to play with. You may find also, if I press one to go to front view, that's orthographic view. But when I go to perspective by middle mouse button, we get quite a distorted look here. If I press N to bring up my tools on the side here and go to view, you can change that focal length. Some people like around 80 to 100. And that sometimes helps with that kind of distortion that you can see. And it makes it a little bit easier to sculpt. Let's also think about the lips at the front. So if I go to side view with one, and we can start drawing some lips here as well. Do make sure you come back around to front view as well to see the effects that you're having and use the smooth brush to kind of bring it back into form. Looks a little bit strange at the moment, but we'll get there eventually. But it starts to take shape over time. I've got a little bit further back than the drawing. I think that's a little bit more accurate, to be fair. Somewhere around there it seems to make sense more. At this point, I'll put in a little bit more time lapse because it's just generally sculpting. And that comes with skill and practice. But hopefully you can get some ideas for your work from what I'm doing. You might just want to smooth out the back by making your brush really big and holding down shift. And just a rough shape like this is what we need for now. And then we can join the eyelids to our main shape. And we can do the same for the ears, the neck, and the nose as well. So we'll do that now. Let's go to layout mode. Now in order to join the eyelids, we need to make sure that they haven't got any modifiers on them. So we need to apply these. We won't be joining the eyes, so we can leave those as they are. But with the eyelids, hover over the modifiers and control A to apply those. And you can see them there. 
We also need to apply the scale and the rotation for these. So control A, rotation and scale. So now I can select the other objects. It's a good idea to select the head last because that way the origin point for the head, which is in the middle there, will be the origin point for everything. So basically the other objects are attaching to that one. And the one we select last, we call the active object. It's highlighted a bit more yellowy than the other ones. And when we press control J to join them all together, you can see we've got that one sphere. They've all joined to this one sphere, which actually had its object center up here, which I didn't realize, but that doesn't matter too much as long as it's the X axis. So at this point, we're not quite ready for detailed sculpting yet, because if I go into my object here, you can see that things like the nose here are still inside the object. The neck is still inside and the ears, there's still patches of that inside. So they're not properly attached. In order to make the manifold, so one kind of whole object, we go across to the sculpting tab and we do a remesh. Now you'll notice in the sculpting tab as well that we've got these face sets. They're not important because they'll clear when we do the remesh. So same as normal, shift R to find your remesh value. So fairly fine now, so 0 0.016 in this case is fine and control R to do the remesh. Now actually that's left the eyelids fairly blocky. So I'll undo that and I'll go a bit finer. But what you do have to be aware of is the finer you go, the harder it is for your computer to process. So some weaker computers, you may struggle a bit. So just be aware of that when you are setting your voxel size. So shift R and I'll come right down to 0 0.006, somewhere around there and control R to remesh. This may take a couple of seconds for you depending on the speed of your computer. And that's a bit better. We possibly could go finer than that. If you want to see the face count, you can come up to the top here and go to statistics. And you can see I've got a face count of 300,000. That's actually quite low and most computers can handle that. So I'll undo my remesh and go that little bit further, in this case to point 0, 0.04 roughly and control R to remesh. Again, it takes a few seconds, but we've got much finer detail and we're on about eight to 900,000 now. Again, most computers should be fairly comfortable with that, but just be aware of those things. If you find it's lagging, then you'll need to remesh to a lower value. Now we're ready for a more detailed sculpt. So I'll put the more detailed sculpt into part two. Hopefully you're managing to follow along with me and still enjoying yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.